Okay, here we go. Week five, we're talking about breathing and breath support for the voice. Uh, last week, I talked about riffing and runs for pop in celebration of American Idol's uh, final season. I had mentioned that I was going to do a riffing uh, exercise uh, video, which I'm going to, if I have time before my uh, first client today, I'm going to try to do that, okay? But let me talk about breathing. All right. So my approach to breathing right now that I'm going to say, because I'm going to talk to you and just kind of give you the basic overview for the first couple minutes of this video. Then I'm going to get more and more in depth uh, and analytical and anatomical about about breathing after that, okay? So if you're just going to tune in for a couple minutes, I want to make sure you at least get some of the main things you've got to understand, okay? So here's the thing I want you to understand first about breathing. Think about yourself like a wind instrument or like a bagpipe or like the bellows of a fireplace or a squeezy toy, like a dog squeezy toy. Let's use the dog squeezy toy for an example. How do they make sound? You know, it's like, like say we've got a rubber ducky and we squeeze it. That's a great example. You squeeze the rubber ducky and out of its hole, or wherever the hole's position is, the, uh, the air coming out makes a sound. It vibrates whatever those, the rubber uh, uh, hole coming out of it is, and it makes a noise. Then by, re by letting go of the squeeze of the ducky, it fills itself back up with air so you can squeeze and make a sound again. Think about you are the rubber ducky, rubber ducky, right? So what you want to do is just your stomach is going to relax. And then to make sound, you squeeze it. Ah, oh, shh, ooh, ooh. And then to fill it back up, just let it go back to neutral, okay? So let's do that in your head voice. Falsetto for guys, head voice for girls. You're just squeezing yourself and then to breathe in you're just letting it go back to neutral okay all right now the last thing I would say to a young kid as I'm working with them is to get them to understand that we would go do a couple so do some head voice exercises then I would talk about right away right in the beginning I would talk about how we need to address the idea that a more intense sound like a belty sound for a, a chest voice or um, yeah, you know, a, a more intense sound is going to require more air pressure and a less intense sound is going to require less air pressure. So belting is like going to be more intensity in those muscles. Head voice woo, will be less intensity in the muscles. OK, so I pretty much that's about as far as I would go with a young student starting off. Now, if I've got adults, I'll go a little further. <laughs> if their eyes start to wander as I'm talking, then I kind of will stop explaining further. But I'm going to imagine that you right now are sitting there engaging like tell me everything there is to that you know about breathing so I'm gonna give it all as if you're you're not uh, bored with what I'm saying okay so I'm gonna get really in-depth now now I talked about this idea of the stomach s dropping back to neutral and then engaging it for sound um, one thing that I notice a lot uh, in the beginning with with students and this is adults kids everybody well, they, they all take a clavicular breath, clavicle, collarbone, clavicular, a breath up here. That breath is terrible for singing. And um, there are singers you can, I can point to YouTube videos of professional singers that breathe like that. And, <clears throat> and so then we say, well, why don't we do that? Well, because they've made it work is one thing. It doesn't mean that it's, the, it's going to uh, be the, the most functional way for, for a singer to breathe. I mean, that they made it work that way is fine, but you breathing the correct way or the you know the most efficient way is going to make you be able to do whatever they're doing and then a lot more an incorrect breathing mechanism really limits your it limits you in a lot of ways um one way in particular is this uh let's think about that clavicular breath watch these muscles when i take when i take a, sh a, a shoulder breath a clavicular breath you see how these muscles get engaged they get involved there you can't with singing keeping this area as neutral as possible in the muscles that need to be neutral is critical to you uh, uh, having a free and consistent technique. If every time you breathe, uh, you're, you're moving up here and moving up here, and then you take a bigger one, they move up here, you're, uh, you're creating a very inconsistent environment to start a sound from. You know? The start of the vocal sound is the most important part of the time in the vocal sound because um, uh, at that moment, the air has to be steady and ready to go. 
if your mechanism's getting all out of whack on your intake of air, you're in trouble. And there's no way to not uh, to to not do that to some degree when you take a clavicular breath. That's one reason that breath is so bad. Another reason that breath is so bad is you're re you're creating this idea that I make my chest bigger to get air in, and I make it smaller to get air out. Why is that such a bad idea? Well, my ribs, I don't know about yours, but they only go in this far. Ugh, you know, I can't get all the extra air out. It's like the tube of toothpaste has like a, a metal cage on it, and that's my ribs. You know, I can't get in there. So how do I get the toothpaste, <laughs> or that was a weird analogy, how do I get the air out of me, or the toothpaste out of me? I've got to get underneath that cage. I've got to squeeze underneath my rib mechanism to get the, the, the organs to press against the diaphragm, which I'm going to talk about in a second, to blow the air out. That's where the breath has to come from for singing. Um, because you just, you can't get it all out. You can't, you get it in tight. And then you can't get it all out when you breathe up here, okay? Now, when people, when we start working on this breath, um, you know, over the first few months of studying it, you go through um, muscle memory coordination changes. And I can tell over the course of time where somebody is with their breathing. Um, you're, uh, in the beginning, it takes all of your concentration to just get this basic concept of, Wait, does my stomach go out or in when I breathe in? I'm so confused. I mean, really, it, it takes a while for most people to get that. And, and so I have to remind them to just start from neutral. Just start like you just had a big pasta meal. It's the most uncomfortable part of the body to have relaxed. Everybody's self-conscious about the midriff. Um, so let's see if I remember later, I'm going to talk about that too. So the stomach's just letting it go back to neutral. And then engaging it for sound it takes a few weeks in the beginning of lessons, at least just to get that before and let alone be starting to talk about the subtleties of the control of this area that we're going to develop later on. OK, so give yourself a lot of time to get used to this concept. Of contracting. And that's where the, the, the sound comes from. OK, now I talked about um, that the more intense a sound the more intense a contraction, and the less intense a sound, the less con intense a contraction. I'm going to get more specific about that too, okay? Um, think about your voice in this way as a, uh, uh, like I said, with a squeezy toy, I'm going to break it down a little different. Imagine you, you are have a bag of air right here going up to, which you kind of, kind of do just here though. Uh, you've got a bag of air here going up to a valve, and that's your vocal folds. By squeezing your stomach, air goes through that valve and makes those vocal folds vibrate. The vocal folds are the valve. Crazy thing with the vocal folds, and I have a vocal anatomy video already up where I break this down, but I'll talk about this more later on in depth too with these weekly videos. We're, when we create a pressured environment inside of our, our vocal mechanism, bop, 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 bop. The, in, in other words, the more thickened I have my vocal folds, the more pressure it will be required to keep that sound, to, to make that sound phonate. It's like I took the strings of the guitar and I thickened them and I fattened them and to make them vibrate, you gotta pluck them harder. It's the same concept with your voice. Those chords are thickened, bop, 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 hey! So I've gotta contract more energy in that pressured environment to support the vibration needs or the phonation needs of the vocal folds inside. Now, if I'm in my head voice for women or falsetto for men, there's much less resistance to the to the vocal folds there, so the the, the abdominal muscles are going to contract differently. There will be less engage muscle, resist air here, like there is in a belting voice, like you know, pop singing, pop, you know, going pop, pop. We're belting those big high notes and stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. As we're doing that, there's a lot of muscular, and there's a lot of energy in here. Now it's not sucking in far. It's not like there's a lot of air coming through the valve, but there is a lot of pressure inside of the valve, like uh, or inside of the vocal tract, like um, like a trumpet player playing a high note. There's a lot of resistance on those lips, and that pressure against those lips is what's required to get the note to come out at that frequency. When you start belting, bop, 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 what, it's the same idea. You're engaging the muscles to create a pressured environment and creating the appropriate appropriate keyword really overdo this and underdo it the appropriate amount of air pressure for the sound you're trying to make um, 
in belting, bop, bop. If you start over-pressurizing and overdriving your stomach when you're singing, what will happen is the vocal cords fatten even more. The vocalis muscle thickens even harder, which makes it so that you, you can't get up to the, the high note even if you try. So it's, I always compare it to like the, I think it's the, the finger traps, you know, where you the, get your finger stuck in it and the harder you pull, the tighter it gets. Um, that it's kind of like that concept. The more, ah, the more that you overdrive your chest voice up to a high note and, ah, ah, I can get there. Ah, and you really push your stomach. It actually makes it harder for you to get to that note. What needs to happen in that case is you need to back off on the air pressure and then rely on thinning out your vocal mix a bit, uh, to accommodate that note instead of pushing harder. Uh, if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. Uh, it will later, or you can talk to me about it in your lesson, okay? So um, as we're breaking it down, this idea of intense breath support comes with a belted sound. Now, head voice, whoo, I, I like to compare when I talk about registers, I talk about chest voices like your trumpet voice, bop, 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 and head voices like your flute voice, whoo. There's a whole different relationship to air and the way it moves through your instrument, whether you're in a chest voice or your head voice. Head voice, uh, they're uh, unlike in chest voice, where if we're belting, especially in chest voice, the, the mechanism really engages and pressurizes steadily underneath to, uh, then that's how we support. In head voice, we're relying more on the air moving through the instrument uh, because the vocal folds are in a much more relaxed state. So um, there is more air movement through your head voice than there is in your chest voice. Now, that doesn't mean that we want our head to accept that for women especially, uh, that the head voice means it's gotta be breathy. We can find a way to make your head voice not breathy, and that's kind of our goal, even though it's a more air flowy gear, okay? But sensationally, you're gonna feel a big difference in your breath when you compare a belting note to uh, an operatic high note uh, for, for a woman, because bop, 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 there's this, you know, the pressure is so different inside of the mechanism. There's more air coming out of my body in that second sound, okay? And in mixing and learning how to mix, you're gonna learn how to negotiate the air. Sometimes, bop, 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 and then you're gonna go air flowy more as you move up to the top part of the note. So this uh, relationship of chest voice, more of an air pressured environment, as you move into a, a, a head voice for women, falsetto for men, uh, the air is going to move, will we'll feel like it speeds up and is allowed through more. There's less pressure and more actual inward movement. So in a head voice compared to a belting note, my stomach feels less muscularized and it feels like it closes a bit more distance uh, in, in that. Okay. Um, so other things I want to say, I want to talk about vibrato. Vibrato comes from lots, I and mean, I have a whole thing I'll talk about, a whole video I'll talk about with vibrato later on, but make sure your vibrato isn't coming from, from shaking your stomach. Shaky stomach syndrome, shaky jaw syndrome, shaky head syndrome, those are not the places where we want vibrato to come from. It comes from inside of your larynx, the cricothyroid muscle, fluttering, stretching and releasing as you're sustaining the note, okay? Don't worry about that, that's not on the breathing quiz, okay? Um, other than that with breathing, uh, another thing I like to address when I talk about breathing with people is this idea of, of the breath line. When, when we start getting used to this idea of the intake of air, just simply being a dropping of your stomach, the first comment people usually say is, um, well, it feels like I'm not going to have enough air. I'm going to run out of air if I breathe like that. I need to take a bigger, <gasps> like suck it in, you know, a big breath like that, like a surprise breath. I remember some teachers uh, that I knew early on used to teach a surprise breath and please don't do the surprise breath this is a surprise breath <gasps> because the idea behind a surprise breath is you're trying to get the throat open and get the idea of this expanding with the breath but look at how much tension that brings into the instrument <gasps> and the eyebrows can't help doing it too and you don't want to, every time you breathe to have your eyebrows go up because you want you want the, they don't help the the breathing mechanism when they go up okay so your breath in should be this intuitive, buoyant thing. Ma, 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 e, a, me, 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 It shouldn't be, okay? If I, in fact, I say, if I hear you taking in air, if I can hear the air going in usually, that means you're breathing in too hard. And uh, a, good, a good litmus test for if you're doing it properly is, e, e, 
just to see if you can do it silently. Now, if you're close up to a mic, you're going to hear that air anyway. So just keep that into account. But, but it's this idea of not helping the air in. You want to get really good at letting it return to neutral. Just letting it drop back out and then re-engaging right away. In the beginning, people will take two or three seconds to let it get to neutral. But in the middle of a song, you don't have two or three seconds. You have to be able to breathe, drop and go. We may breathe, I don't know how many, I've never counted it, but I'd imagine it's at least over 30 times probably in the middle of a, in a song, you're gonna take a breath. And what you need to do every time you breathe is let your, you know, if every time you breathe, you took two seconds to do it, you'd be like, where do we go? Breathing. Where do we? And then you have to sort of get into it like that. No, you can, you have to take a fast breath. But if I'm telling you it has to be a, a non, an inaudible breath or a, a, a very natural breath, then you have to do it you have to be able to let those muscles drop right away. And so an exercise I like to do is And so what I'm doing is dropping and going, dropping and going. And I'm just getting used to this idea of relaxing out and then going. And then as I started off on this tangent earlier, um, talking about the length of breath line. When people start breathing like this, usually the next thought in their head is, well, I don't feel like I've got enough air for the phrase. Think about this is how you're gonna solve running out of air issues with your voice. You're not gonna solve it by trying to pack more air into your body and make your voice tighter by bringing tension in. You don't wanna solve it that way. The way you're gonna solve uh, issues if you're running out of air is by changing the way that the valves are allowing the air to come out of them. You know, as a trumpet player, change the way your, your lips are functioning. Don't change the way you're getting air into your body, okay? Let me give you an example. I'm going to breathe the same way two times. I'm going to breathe in the same way two times. I'll be blowing out differently because the valve will be behaving differently. Uh, uh, Tim, I'm doing your breathing exercises and they're not working. I'm running out of air. Watch, I'm doing the stomach right. Uh, uh. <laughs> right, well, something's wrong and it's not my fault. <laughs> it's how you're breathing, okay? The thing that's happening wrong in what you're doing is your valve, your vocal folds are wide open. The valve's not stopping the air from coming through at all. <sighs> it's just all blowing through. The valve needs to resist the air. Uh, so if I'm running out of air, watch this. Uh, I'll breathe in the same way and then I'm going to make it really long. Uh, uh, Notice this sound, I'm not wasting air. I could hold it for a long time, and so on. Okay, I won't do that forever, because that's, that just waste time. All right, so, but you get the idea that I control running out of air by the way that I allow the air out, not by packing more air in, okay? So, recap all of this info. Breathing in, let your abdominal muscles drop out, Engaging them, sss, sss. practice this idea of just letting go and engaging. Oh, one last thing before I do the recap, I've got to say. Standing up straight, super important. I can't believe I didn't say that one. And why is standing up straight important for breathing? Your rib cage, your diaphragm is atta attached all the way on the inside of the rib cage, all the way around the back. And when you take a proper breath for singing, your abdominal muscles go out and your diaphragm goes down just like that, okay? Your diaphragm is contracted when it's in this down state, when it's like that. So your abdominal muscles are out and your diaphragm is contracted down. You're supporting by contracting the abdominal muscles inch below your belly button, underneath, and then pressing your organs, super gross, I know, up against your diaphragm, which is contracted. So essentially your breath support really is an antagonistic relationship between your abdominal muscles contracting underneath your organs and pressing them against a contracted diaphragm. So in that relationship, there's uh, uh, stability and control in the air coming through your instrument. If you slouch when you're singing and keep your ribs all collapsed, what happens is the diaphragm inside of there it flops out, it disengages, it doesn't keep that antagonistic or, or 
uh, fighting against one another relationship of the ab abdominal muscles against it contracted. S it loses that mechanical relationship if you're slouchy because it just it just chills out it needs that like a trampoline it needs you know your rib cage to be expanded um inside of there to keep the to keep the stretch down so that's kind of how that idea works so you've got to stand up now i don't want you to stand up and feel like oh now i need to sing all torque like oh you all have we have to walk around like uh the stantorian greek statue robots no but to some degree, we do need to keep ourselves lifted enough to be aware of that sensation of the diaphragm. You get so you can kind of feel, well, you really can feel. There's no nerve endings down there, per se, but you can feel the sense of space inside. And you certainly can feel your abdominal muscles. And notice as I do that, when you're doing it right, you can see that my solar plexus right here, it kind of bulges from the engaging underneath that's happening here as I'm supporting okay um, so I needed to say that now back to the recap okay recap breathing in first of all this is uh, something it's got to be intuitive it can't be you know I've gone through a lot of mechanics here but when I breathe for singing it's very natural me 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 ah me 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 it should be intuitive okay when you were a baby you you would you would breathe like this natural your stomach would expand and then you would contract we unlearn that somewhere uh, I forget what age it was I read, but it's somewhere as we're growing older, we unlearn our, our natural, expand our stomach and contract to make sound. Because you watch a baby, just watch a baby if you have any in your life right now, when their stomach expands and then they scream. It's like, you can see the actual mechanics. They even open their throat when they scream. That's how something so little can make such a big sound. All right. So it's got to be intuitive. It's natural. Your body knew how to do it when you were a baby. Let it get back to there. You can do this throughout the day when you're walking around. If you're in class and, and you've got the concept and you just your mind is can be active somewhere else slightly, turn it to your breath. Don't make a noise in class because people will think you're crazy. This idea of dropping and engaging, okay? Making sure it's relaxed. Um, more intense sounds, more air pressure, more engaging. Less intense sounds, less air pressure. Head voice, more airflow movement through the instrument. Chest voice, more pressure resistance. All right, there you go. That's enough. I think, I'm sure I'll probably think of something else that I've forgotten, but that may be everything I have to say. Uh, I'm sure that I know there's more. Um, but I, I already think of a couple of things more, but I'm not going to say any more. You have to come take a voice lesson to hear more. Um, and I don't know. Oh, I don't think I saved time for the warm up. I may have to do that tomorrow. So um, here we go. That's my breathing. Have a great week. Ask me or Emily or Ariel, one of my instructors, uh, Taylor, about it if, uh, if you have any questions further. Okay. Thanks so much.